Wait, so they hire her in to be their DEI specialist, and now she wants to sue them for discrimination. What's going on, everybody? Appreciate you guys all being here. Make sure you follow me on all these platforms that you see listed up here, these little ticker thingies right here. Make sure you follow me on all those programs, ladies and gentlemen. Really appreciate it if you did that. Thank you guys for taking your time out of your day to listen to me rant on this particular matter right here, but I think it is of the utmost importance because I want to call out BS where BS is. And whether this is BS or not, I do not know. I don't know yet. But it did come across my desk from some friends of mine. Shout out to you guys over there in uh, California who wanted me to look into this particular topic that came up. I don't want to say it's a topic. It's more of a matter. And it's regarding Google. And this video might be definitely heavily suppressed because Google or, you know, YouTube don't want to hear any news about something that they may have done bad. Not saying that they did, but it's a possibility that they may have done something bad. This is really interesting though, ladies and gentlemen. This, I, I mean, when I saw this, I kind of like, uh, wait, what? Black deaf Google worker who was touted as their diversity success story is now suing Google for discrimination. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all heard that all. And I'm going to show y'all. Boom. A black deaf Google employee who has been celebrated as corporate events. No, she's been celebrated at corporate events and on social media as a success story for the search giants inclusive workplace has now accused the company of discrimination based on her disability and her race. You got to hire because you black. You got hired because they didn't discriminate because you have a disability. And now you are trying to sue them because of your skin color and because of your disability. And you're going to dive a little bit more deeper into this before I make any assumptions and go in on her. In an explosive lawsuit filed in the U.S. Northern District of California, Jalen Hall, the first and only black deaf hire at Google, according to Wired, slammed Google for limiting her access to sign language interpreters month after starting the job. The first and only, ladies and gentlemen, the first and only, y'all, are y'all catching on to what I'm trying to tell you? The first and only black and deaf hire. She's the only one. And now it's, she said discrimination. And she is, she said, for limiting her access to sign language interpreters months after she started the job. She's saying they're limiting her to sign language interpreters. In the complaint, the worker painted Google's management environment as hostile and racially charged. Now, I'm not, I could be making an assumption here. I'm sorry, I'm going to just tell y'all what's on my mind. If there are no sign language interpreters there, how is she hearing anything that somebody might be? She might have a cochlear implant. I'm just saying, but let, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. This just kills me when people get into these spaces and instantly try to make a come up. And I'm just, I'm not saying that's what she's doing, but I am kind of saying that's what she's doing. My brain, my assumption is to say, this is what this girl is trying to do. This said, she cited Google's manager at the company's machine learning research program calling her an aggressive black deaf woman and advising her to keep her mouth shut and take a sales role. Y'all, I, 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 I'm not saying this to be funny. I, I, I'm not. I have people that work under me that we have patience, literally patience. One of my therapists that I hired at one of our facilities, this particular therapist, she is deaf and she ended up getting a cochlear implant. I remember talking to her and how beautiful it was and, she told me that the first time, the first thing she ever heard in her life was water and she bawled. So I understand that accommodations are needed big time. 
They had it to the point where when she treated some people, they had an interpreter there for her. So there is accommodations there. She got so good at it that she was able to read lips that if she did need an interpreter for certain residents or certain patients, she would have an interpreter come. Whenever we would have meetings, whenever, depending on what region I'm in, if I do have people that are deaf, whenever we have meetings, I make sure that we do have an interpreter there. That way, when I am giving a meeting, that they have somebody there signing for her, right? Anyway, again, it said she cited Google's manager at the company machine learning research program calling her an aggressive black deaf woman. So if he called her that, she either can read lips or she has a cochlear implant to where she can hear it. I don't know. And advising her to keep her mouth shut and take a sales role so she can talk. Apparently. Google also excluded her from roundtable discussions and passed over for promotion due to inaccurate evaluation after three years, according to the suit. Again, Google excluded her. This is what they're saying. They're, she's saying that Google excluded her from roundtable discussions and passed over her for promotions due to an accurate evaluation after three years, according to this suit. Google is using me to make them look inclusive for the deaf community and overall disability community. Hall told Wire. In reality, they need to do better, she said. Now that could she, hey, she could be making a good point there. A lot of woke companies are doing that. But at the same time, I'm just going to say this to her. That's what we're talking about when we say, don't just go into these DEI things because that's literally what a lot of companies are doing. And it is very possible that you may not be qualified for what they want you to do, but they only want you there just so they can fill a quote and not say, hey, I mean, look what we did. We even had it to where our AI was even showing you that George Washington them and a lot of the forefather, forefather political figures back in those days, they were black. And now because you got hired on, honey, this is what affirmative action looked like. Welcome to where you got hired in, not because you're qualified or because you got the skills and the knowledge or anything or the experience. It's simply because you looked the part. Yeah, it should be an insult to your intelligence. And I agree with her on that. Only then Google had praised Hall for helping expand opportunities for black deaf professionals. While on Instagram, the corporation had featured a research analysis, I mean, a research analyst for making hashtag life at Google more inclusive. Google recruiters promised Hall, who joined Google as a content moderator, as a content moderator in 2020, that sign language interpreters would be provided and can and fully accommodated. Again, it said that sign language interpreters would be provided and can be fully accommodated. Months later, Hall was assigned to enforce YouTube's child safety regulations, but managers refused interpreters to assist Hall in reviewing the content, according to Wired. Let me get y'all a look. Now, look, I'm just telling y'all this. Content moderators, I know all about them, because boy, 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 do. If you ever had your channel or had your videos demonetized, I don't even like a lot of these content moderators. A lot of times these content moderators, they would accuse you of doing something after they so-called manually checked your videos of something that you didn't do. For example, I have a video out there, y'all. If you've been with my channel know me, you are not going to catch one time where you ever heard me swear or cuss. You're never going to see any type of content on my channel where it's going to be a, a, like, you know, sexually explicit or anything like that. One of their moderators literally on my video tagged the video and said that the thumbnail had like cuss words or something of that sort too. And I had to write them back saying, where do you see a cuss word at in my thumbnail? Even in my video, where do you hear me even cuss at all? This was years back. And they found me to be right. So anyway, what I'm saying that for is this. If she is a, if she was assigned to enforce YouTube's child safety regulations, but managers refused interpreters to assist her in reviewing the content, in what way? Because last time I checked, you press a button called closed caption and you can read what's being said you don't necessarily need an interpreter i'm just telling y'all sometimes the closed caption can get some words wrong but i guess what she's saying here is that while she's watching the video and 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 somebody else might be listening they're doing it to sign they're signing to her and telling her what's being said but at the same time i could be wrong on this i might be jumping the gun again reportedly the company worried about exposing contractors to graphic imagery and confidentiality concerns despite U.S. interpreters adhering to a code of conduct that includes standards of confidentiality. Deprived from her interpreter, Hall seldom reached the quota of 75 videos that each moderator was required to review within an eight-hour workday. 
Frequently, she would watch an entire video, sometimes exceeding an hour, before realizing she couldn't adequately assess its content. She said, I felt a sense of humiliation, recognizing that my career wasn't progressing, she told Wire. Hall still holds the position of a two, uh, she holds the position of a level two employee after three years at Google, while the majority of the company workers moved to level three within this time frame, Wired reported. Last week, Google filed, uh, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to, I'm going to address this. It said that she felt the sense of humiliation because she wasn't progressing like everybody else was. Let's keep it real. If there are people who don't have a disability, who are able to get through these videos at a certain amount of speed, why wouldn't they? Let me give y'all another example because a lot of y'all don't like this. There are some people that you're going to meet in life, some patients. They would ask, actually say, that they don't want a particular therapist, maybe because they don't understand what she's saying. Because I'm just being real with y'all, and there's a shout out to her. She knows who she is. Well, they know who they are. Some of our uh, therapists, some of our nurses, some of our doctors, some of our clinicians, any of those clinicians that were deaf. And when, I'm just being real. This is what they do. They go, oh, do you want to come down to the top because I can't? And they be like, look, I can't. I don't dare tell you off this side. Hey, I don't want to work with her because I, I feel bad that I can't understand what she's saying. What I'm saying that for is this. Also, within the scope of certain type of work environments, somebody is going to advance or make a little bit more money than others would because they can do more in certain aspects because somebody might be disabled. I have nurses that are in wheelchairs that they are paid less than, or they might not be promoted as some other nurses that are not in wheelchairs because of the physicality that you have to do. Maybe you have to lift the patient, turn the patient. Some of them can't do it. So they're not going to get certain promotions. And I get that. In this case right here, if she needs an interpreter, they already are accommodating her versus there are other people there that don't need an interpreter. They're able to go through these videos, get them all done. Boom, I get it. So I don't feel that in this particular case that it may be unfair. Now, if they're not accommodating her when they promised her that they would, I get that. But again, to the ones who are able to go through these videos at a faster rate because they don't have that disability, to me, that would be unfair for them to have to stay where she at because of the fact that she can't interpret the videos and get through the videos like they can. That's not the people that's being promoted for. And I don't know what these levels are as far as Google go, but if you become a level three, I don't know what that all entails, but would that absolutely 100% end up causing her to actually lose again? Because that's what affirmative action did. Affirmative action, you should just get in because you look the part and you fit the description. But when you get in there, you really can't perform the work that's required to do. And they fail out. So this may be one of those cases. Anyway, just want to throw that out there to y'all. Last week, Google filed to dismiss the lawsuit, arguing that the claims were brought too late. But the company didn't deny the charges, according to Wired. So they didn't deny that we didn't get her an interpreter. The worker filed three HR complaints before suing, which yielded little change. But she said she has stayed at Google to encourage better working conditions for others. So again, you see the Google say we didn't deny that we didn't give her an interpreter. They didn't deny that. So what's the next step? What is Google going to do? I don't know. The worker filed three HR complaints before suing, which yielded little change, but she has stayed at Google to encourage better working conditions. She said it would be selfish to quit Google. I'm standing in the gap for those often pushed aside. You're the only one. I mean, <laughs> what others? I'm not saying it to be rude, y'all, but for real. They, she is the only black and deaf person in that position. So who is she standing in the gap for? Because it seems like others are not trying to get on there. I might be jumping the gun again, but we'll see as we read. She said black and disabled employees constitute a small minority at Google, a company with nearly 183,000 workers. Black women comprising approximately 2.4% of Google's U.S. workforce have shown a disproportionately higher departure rate compared to women of other races, as indicated by the company data from last year, which means what? So you're going to stay in there, and even though you're not happy with what Google doing, even if they're not going to accommodate you, even if you're never going to reach their level three tier that you're trying to get to, you're going to stay there so you can stand in the gap. And when you say that black and disabled employees constitute a small minority at Google, what is that supposed to mean? They should hire in more just because they're black and disabled? What does that mean? What if, there, what if that's because black people are not applying to it? What if it's mean because they don't qualify for it? I mean, do you feel that you're qualified for it? 
Well, apparently Google don't if they're not moving you up. Anyway, y'all, this is uh, the reason why I say all that because I don't know what level three inquires. Like if she is having to do what they say, like seven videos a day, does level three require you to do more than that? I'm keeping it real with y'all. If a regular person like you and I who are not deaf or any of you that's listening that are not deaf, if you're able to smash through and go through these videos and moderate them at a quicker rate than a person that's deaf, and now when you go to level three, maybe that requires you to do more. So what they're looking at this is that they're having to already pay her as they are, which is, this is true. And now they're absolutely having to accommodate her by paying an interpreter to be there. And if she has to move up, that requires her to do more. That means that the interpreter is going to be called on more and they're going to be paying more. I'm just telling y'all that from a business aspect, even though Google may not admit that, but I'm telling y'all that from a business aspect. Now, her trying to say black women, are, uh, comp comp you know, comprised of approximately 2.4% of Google's U.S. workforce, which means what? That means nothing. That's, that, that's, it is what it is. And she said they, they, are, uh, they have shown a disproportionately higher departure rate compared to women of other races. Well, I don't know if Google does this, but typically uh, as a director, when someone departs from my company, I give them a, we give them a survey, an exiting survey. We want to know if, it, if it's something that we could do to improve or why they left. Or in that, as a matter of fact, we also do something to where we try to ask them, is there something we could have done to kept them? That's just how I operate. Google's deaf and hard of hearing employee group consists of only 40 members, Wired reported. Along with personal compensation, Hall demanded Google introduce reinforcement policies to ensure future hires receive reasonable and accommodation and have equal opportunities just as other non-black deaf employees with disability. The fact that they Google have them in there right now is not going to it's not going to be like when you say equal and reasonable accommodations like what? reinforcement policies to reinforce what that y'all just get interpreters i mean i'm trying to figure out what it is that she's talking about particularly and which i do not know and that pretty much closes that up right there so again google didn't deny it but at the same time just from a work ethic standpoint i just gave y'all some little hints and little tips and little gems i guess you can call it on why that may be and why that may have occurred why google is not moving her up but one thing I don't think is going to be good is try to accuse them of only doing this because you're black and you're deaf. Because trust me when I tell you, especially when it comes to those with disabilities, that is a very well protected group. And then right now, <laughs> being black is a well protected group. So honestly, if there are people, and I'm just telling you, all our company, we got a worldwide company. We're not perfect. But one thing I do, and my employees, if you, y'all don't know them, but my employees that watch the channel, they will tell you, I'm always fair. And I encourage you, if you are not happy with what's going on here, if our company is not a doing X, Y, and Z like you feel they should, and I try to go and I vouch for y'all and they still tell me we're not going to do X, Y, and Z, I encourage them, y'all. If y'all not happy, y'all, go to a place that's going to treat y'all better. If, they, if they're not trying to give y'all the raise and y'all feel y'all deserve it after y'all been there a year and merit went up and then, you know, and inflation happened and the company, I'm vouching for y'all and they still not giving it to y'all. If y'all can find another company that's going to give it to y'all, go and do that. Of course, we're going to hate losing y'all, but I want you to be happy. I won't want you to stay and be miserable or anything like that, knowing the company is not going to do anything extra for you. I'm just saying that. So to me, if I work for Google and I see that Google is not trying to do all these extra accommodations that they, have, that they promise you, I would say, sis... Go to a place that's going to accommodate you better than this because it's not going to get better. They're not going to move you up if they're not going to promote you. They're not going to get you the interpreters that you feel that you deserve or what they promised you. And if they're not doing that and then you see the lawsuit's not going anywhere, don't be there because you're going to be miserable working there. I do not want to wake up every day going to work knowing that I'm going to be miserable and mad because this job does not want to accommodate me for what they promised me. I would move on. That's just my take. What does you guys take? But before y'all leave any comments, make sure y'all hit that like button for me right now. Also, get into those cell phones. Let someone know about this channel and encourage them to subscribe to this channel after they checked it out, all right? I want to hear what y'all got to say on this. To me, DEI was already the wrong move anyway with a lot of these jobs because it's nothing more than another word for affirmative action where you're only getting hired based off of your race or your, your, your race or your, the way you identify, et cetera, et cetera, right? Not the qualifications. When I get applications to come in, I don't even care what the ethnic is on there. I, first of all, me personally, I, first of all, look 
see what job they're applying for, and I look for the years of experience, and if they have a specialty in what they do, I can care less about what they look like. And I'll be darned to this day, my, my, I'm a boss myself, but my higher-uppers, they know that that's how I operate, that's how I move. I do not care about your skin color. I'm looking at what's going to benefit this company, and it's going to absolutely 100% cause us to have more capital. But I'm not about to just simply hire nobody because of their skin color. We don't even, honestly, a lot of bosses that I talk to, we don't even look at, we don't even care. I, in medicine, we haven't even gotten anything specific telling us that, hey, we're looking to up the, no. Because the only color we care about is green. And the only sex we care about are men that are on that green, which is money. So I'm just telling y'all. Anyway, don't forget to leave a comment here, ladies and gentlemen. I love to hear what you guys have to say on this matter. I am Ty Smith, modern renaissance man, hoping and praying that every last one of you have food, shelter, and clothing. And most of all, I pray every last one of you guys are in great health mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. God bless you all through Jesus.